Hello friends, today we are going to discuss central place theorem which was given by Kristler. Sometimes we call Kristler central place theorem. Here in the picture you can see the model red dot shows cities, brown shows town, blue shows market towns and a small white town dots will show you the village and black line will show you the boundary so crystaller central place theory was first proposed in 1930 and it was proposed by geographer walter crystaller based on his studies of southern germany This theory was further developed by August Loss in Germany and Brian Berry and others in USA during 1950. The theory applies most clearly in the region such as Great Plains which are neither heavily industrialized nor interrupted by major physical features such as rivers or mountain ranges. Central place theory is an attempt to explain the spatial arrangement, size and number of settlements. In flat landscape of the southern Germany, Kristler noticed that towns of a certain size were roughly equidistant. By examining and defining the functions of the settlement structures and the size of the hinterland, he found it possible to model the pattern of a settlement locations using geometric shapes. So what was his assumptions? So Christo made some of the assumptions which are like an isotropic flat surface, evenly distributed population, evenly distributed resources, similar purchasing power of all consumer and consumers will patronized nearby market, no excess profit, consumers are of the same income level and same shopping behavior, uniform transport network that permitted direct travel from each settlement to the other, transport cost is proportional to the distance traveled, for example the distance, the larger the distance, the higher will be the transport cost. So these are some of the assumptions which Kristler has taken for making this model. Now we will discuss some of the terms which will be used in this discussion. Central place. A central place is a settlement which provides one or more services for the population living around it. Low order or high order. Some basic services, for example grocery stores, are said to be of low order which specialized services like university, health, are said to be of higher order. Having a higher order service implies that there are low order services around it, but not vice versa. Low order settlements. Settlements which provide low order services are said to be of low order residence. High order settlements. Settlements that provide high order services are said to be high order settlements like a school, universities, big hospitals, cinemas, entertainment, parks. The spheres of influence. The sphere of influence is the area under influence of the central place. Threshold. Threshold is the minimum population that is required to bring about the provision of a certain goods or services. For example, for a university, at least 5 lakh population should be there so that a university can be open. A range of goods and services. A range of goods and services. The average maximum distance people will travel to purchase goods and services will be called as range of the services. Central place size and spacing. Within the central place system, there are five sizes of the communities. A hamlet 
is the smallest in the rural community which is too small to be considered a village. The rank order of the central place is hamlet which is smaller than a village, then village, then town, then city and then there is the regional capital. Crystaller principle theory has three order of principles. Marketing principle is k is equal to 3. The transportation principle is equal to k is to 4. The administrative principle is k equal to 7. According to the marketing principle k is equal to 3, the market area of a higher order place occurs one third of the market area of each of the consecutive lower order places which lies in its neighbor. The lower size nodes, six in number and second large circles, are located at the corner of the largest hexagon around the higher order settlements. Each high order settlements get one third of each settlement satellite settlements. However, this k is equal to 3 marketing network, the distance traveled is minimized. The transportation network is not the most efficient because there is no intermediate transport link between the larger places. So what is this marketing principle? In this system, market areas of a certain level of the central place hierarchy are three times bigger than the next lower one. That's why k is equal to 3. <coughs> the different levels then follow a progression of the 3, meaning that it one moves from the order of a place, the number of the next level goes up 3 times. For example, when there are two cities, then there would be six towns, 18 villages and 54 hamlets. So it will increase in multiple of the three. Transportation principle, according to this K will be equal to four. Transport principle, the market area of a Higher order place includes half of the market area of each of the six neighboring lower order places as they are located in the haze of hexagon around the higher order settlements. This generates a hierarchy of the central places which results in most efficient transport work. These are maximum central places possible located on the main transport routes connecting to the higher order settlements. The transportation principle involves the minimization of the length of the road connecting central places at all hierarchy of the levels. In this system of nesting, the lower order centers are all located along the road linking the higher order centers. The alignment of the places along a road leads to minimization of road length. For each higher order centers, there are four centers of Im immediate lower order is <coughs> administrative principle administrative principle says that k is equal to 7 is the last system and the variation between the lower orders and higher orders increases by a factor of 7. Here the highest order trade areas completely covers that of the lower areas, meaning that the market serves a larger area. You will be wondering why hexagons has been used in this theory to delineate market areas. Circles are equidistant from center to edge but they overlap or leave gaps. Squares nest together without gap but their sides are not equidistant from the center. Geographers use hexagon to depict the market area of a goods or service because hexagon offer a composite structure 
însă it has some advantages it does have a reasonable good job of describing the spatial pattern of urbanization no other economic theory explains why there is hierarchy of urban areas but Crystal's central place theory has done a good job in explaining this the central place hierarchy provides a description of the relationship between a central place higher order place and its tributary areas like the lower order places once this hierarchy is pointed out anyone can see it central place theory does a good job of describing the location of a trade and service activity let's see how good the central place theory is the pattern of the city predicted by the central place theory may not hold because of the failure to meet its initial assumptions production cost may vary not only because of economics of a scale but also because natural resource endowment like availability of the natural resources transportation cost are not equal in all directions the transportation cost will be low in those areas in those routes in which there is a large number of transport traffic movement rural market are not evenly distributed non economic factors like culture politics leadership may be important but not evenly distributed competitive practices may lead to freight absorption and phantom freight other forms of imperfect competitions what are the limitations of the crystallers central place theory large areas of flat land are rare with the presence of relief barriers channeling transport in a certain direction is a common feature government interventions can indicate the location of any industry perfect competition is unreal in some forms making more money than others people vary their shopping trends not always going to the nearest center people or resources are never perfectly distributed crystaller envisaged each center with a particular function whereas they have many with changes over time so a center won't be serving the same purpose over a longer period of time hope you have enjoyed the lecture and uh, we will discuss next topic in our next lecture for staying tuned to our lecture you can subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon so that you can be notified when our next lecture is available for you to listen thank you thank you for listening